Now at 8.30 on WKYT This Morning, it's the 15th anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. We'll tell you what is being done here in the bluegrass to remember those lost. Plus, a Kentuckian is trying to make a push for a visitor center at the 9-11 Memorial in Washington, D.C. And U.K. football was back in action last night for game two of the season. Lee K. Howard will have some highlights. That's coming up on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Thank you so much for joining us on Sunday, September 11th. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. And I'm Sean Moody. Yeah, hard to believe 15 years ago today were the 9-11 terror attacks and uh, memorial services happening all over the, the country and several here in central Kentucky. Yeah, we're going to have some beautiful weather for these memorial services. Meteorologist Mike Linden joins us now with a look at today's forecast. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Michelle. We are really looking at some fantastic conditions as we work our way into Sunday. As we get started this morning, there is some cloud cover over southeastern Kentucky. It's very light though. Nothing that's bringing us any rainfall and nothing really that ugly. Things are calming down here in the bluegrass and that's setting the table for what looks to be an excellent excellent Sunday afternoon. Now this cold front that brought us the storms and the strong winds yesterday is still moving eastward bringing severe thunderstorms to the Massachusetts, Vermont and Connecticut area in the northeast. But here in Kentucky things again are calming down not to mention cooling down as well. Temperatures have slipped back into the upper 50s. That's quite a difference from where we have been over the past few mornings. And again, that's setting us up for what looks to be an excellent Sunday out ahead of us. So just as long as you like temperatures that are nice and mild with sunshine and calm winds, well, today's going to be the day for you. And coming up in about 10 minutes, I'll take you hour by hour and show you when things will start to change. All right, Mike, thank you. And again, like we said, it's really hard to believe that it's been 15 years. It is now. hard to believe. Yeah. 15 years since 9 11. Mm -hmm. And with that, so many places are going to have memorial services, including right here in central Kentucky. WKYT's Mike Byer joins us now live at EKU's campus with more on a service they'll be holding a little bit later this morning. Mike? Good morning, Michelle. We're just minutes away from a special 9-11 memorial service here at Eastern Kentucky University. The service is about to begin, and several uh, speakers will be on hand, including the university president, Michael Benson, as well as Richmond Mayor Jim Barnes. They will be here to speak. The service starts at 8.30, which uh, it's about to start right now, as you can see behind me. Now, nearly 3,000 people lost their lives on this day 15 years ago when two planes crashed into the World Trade Center. Another crashed into the Pentagon, and a fourth hijacked plane crashed into a Pennsylvania field. The World Trade Center's North Tower was hit at 8.46 in the morning, and the South Tower was hit just after 9. Now, President Obama will be leading the nation in a moment of silence at 8.46 this morning. That's less than 15 minutes from now to remember those lost in this tragedy. Now, as I mentioned, speakers scheduled to uh, talk here in just a few minutes during this 9-11 memorial service are University President Michael Benson, as well as Richmond Mayor Jim Barnes and several other local leaders. The service is being held here at Memorial Plaza on EKU's campus, and it's about to begin. So live in Richmond, Mike Byer, WKYT. Thank you so much, Mike. There are more 9-11 memorial services taking place across the bluegrass today. In Williamstown, members of the Alpha Sigma Phi fraternity will be beautifying the Kentucky Veterans Cemetery starting at 9 o'clock this morning. In Radcliffe, a new 9-11 memorial will be dedicated at 2 o'clock this afternoon at Kentucky Veterans Cemetery Central. And in Carlisle, the second annual remembrance ceremony will be held starting with a parade at 3 o'clock. Of course, Washington, D.C. is full of monuments and memorials, but there's one a little off the beaten path that pays tribute to the Americans, including one from Moorhead, killed in our country's worst terror attack. Yeah, Washington correspondent Ted Fioriliso takes us to the Pentagon Memorial. If you're old enough to remember, you'll never forget what happened on September 11, 2001. Right outside our nation's capital, 184 people lost their lives when terrorists slammed an American Airlines flight into the Pentagon. Here, those lives are not forgotten. It's a place where you can go and get inside and kind of get lost in your own thoughts. Jim Lachek lost his brother Dave in the building. He showed me around the memorial dedicated to the victims, right in the shadow of the impact site. His bench in the, this age line is pretty much right where the flight path of the plane came. At first, you see the obvious, 184 benches, each engraved with a victim's name. But take a closer look, and there's a lot more symbolism. Benches facing the building represent the victims on the plane. 
The ones pointed away are for those who died in the Pentagon. They're organized in order of birth year. The oldest victim, a 71-year-old retired Navy captain. The youngest, a three-year-old girl. Communities across the country were impacted by this attack, including our own. Edward Earhart was a native of Moorhead, and he spent time at the Naval Reserve Center in Lexington. About 500,000 people visit the memorial each year, including school kids who weren't even born at the time. Five children died in the attack. Uh, two little girls that were traveling with their mother and father to Australia, and then three kids from uh, D.C. Uh, elementary schools that were traveling with their teachers with National Geographic. And in those kids uh, that were in school were fifth and sixth graders. So it's interesting to see kids that are fifth and sixth graders uh, gravitate towards those benches. But Jim says there are a lot more stories to tell. So he's helping to develop a plan for a new visitor education center, which he hopes will attract even more visitors. They honor my brother, they honor the families. They honor their memory by taking time to come here and, and spend some time here and remember what, what happened on that day. At the Pentagon, Ted Fioriliso, WKYT. Jim is hoping to raise six to seven million dollars for the center. The Fayette County Coroner has identified a man found dead inside a burning car. He says Trevor Jil Dilger was the man killed in the back seat of a car just off Old Frankfort Pike a week ago today. The coroner has not released his cause of death. We talked to some of Dilger's friends who said he was well liked by everyone. To, to hear this happening is. I mean, it's something that really nobody expected just because of who Trevor is as a person. Well, so far, police haven't arrested anyone in the case. A second murder suspect is now behind bars this morning in connection with a shooting. Police say they arrested Daniel Glasscock last night. Destiny Huff was arrested on Friday. Police say the two shot and killed Victor Villa Gomez Duarte outside the Lexington Microtel in last week. Both Huff and Glasscock face murder and robbery charges in that case. Police are still looking for two men wanted in connection with a shooting in Lexington. Lexington police say someone shot a man in the chest and wrist behind the Captain D's on Reynolds Road. The victim, Charles Davis, was taken to UK Hospital before being arrested. Police charged Davis with possession of marijuana and possession of a handgun by a felon. Police do not have any descriptions of the suspects in this case. State police say an escaped inmate in Lee County is now back behind bars. Troopers say they arrested William Napier yesterday morning after spending hours searching for him. Napier is accused of stabbing and killing a man in July at the Jackson Inn. Family members say they're glad police found him. It was another tough game out there Just for the Big Blue Nation. Another tough game, right? Mm -hmm. The Cats are now 0 and 2 on the season after that tough loss against Florida. Lee K. Howard has highlights from the game. Well, the Kentucky losing streak has been extended to 30 against Florida. It was a rough day for the Wildcats at the Swamp on Saturday. Florida captured the early lead, and they never let off the gas. Near the end of the first quarter, after an interception, Luke Del Rio goes long on the very next play, finds Antonio Callaway in stride. A 78-yard touchdown pass. Gators were up 14 to nothing. Drew Barker would struggle in this one. Picked off three times. Down 24 to nothing in the third. Marcus May hauling in the wounded duck. Barker just two for 10. 10 yards, three interceptions. Gators, of course, made the Cats pay. Freddie Swain hauls in a 26-yard touchdown pass. And this one will be the one the Wildcats will want to forget soon. Full, falling to Florida, 45-7. to seven. Guys, not a good day for the Wildcats. Back to you. Uh, Lee K, thank you. Even though Saturday was a rough one for the fans, season ticket holders did get a special treat. More than 2,000 season ticket holders got the chance to tour UK's new $45 million practice facility. Fans got to walk down the same path that recruits do when they visit the school. It was the first time the building's been empty enough to allow for a tour like this one. UK's leaders haven't said if the general public will also get the chance to tour it in the future. That is a pretty incredible it is beautiful, facility. beautiful, isn't it, yeah. for a training facility? Yeah, man. That's, so your time uh, now is 8.39. Uh, that, that would fire anybody up. Uh, we have lots more <laughs> coming up on WKYT this morning. And we are looking at beautiful weather here on Sunday afternoon. We're getting started with nothing but sunshine, and there's still more on the way. I'll take you hour by hour and show you how good Sunday looks when we come back. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Mike Linden. Welcome to Sunday, and welcome to calmer, cooler, and sunnier weather. It is a huge difference from where we were yesterday, dealing with thunderstorms, damaging winds, 
thick, ugly clouds. Now on the Defender Radar Network, things again are looking a whole lot better. Clear skies and clearing skies over southeastern Kentucky, where we are still finding some very thin cloud cover. That's all what's left of this cold front that's now working its way eastward toward New England. On the west side, on the back end of this cold front, is the cooler air, the calmer conditions. And that goes for most of the Midwest and the Plains, really. Kentucky is certainly shaping up to, to have an awesome looking Sunday. Look at these lines here. Those represent the winds coming in from the north. That's where the cool air is. That's where the drier air is. And we're getting it all as we get our Sunday morning started here in the bluegrass. Temperature wise, we're sitting right now in the upper 50s, which is pretty mild compared to where we have been lately. And as we work our way through the afternoon today, check it out. We'll start you off in about a half an hour from now at 9 and continue into the middle of the day. This is right around 4 o'clock, the mid 70s. Sunny skies, the winds will be nice and light. A beautiful day to spend some time outside. Of course, football kicks off today. We're super excited about the NFL coming back. And maybe if there's a way you can bring the TV outside or have a projector or something, we're looking at great weather again to spend some time outside. This is football weather for you in the mid 70s. Monday looks good too, with temperatures expected to work their way back into the 80s, the low 80s though. Again, sunny skies, things looking good. Tuesday is where things start to get a little more muddled. We begin to see the southerly flow return, and that means the warm, moist air. Notice those temperatures working their way back into the mid 80s as well. Just a chance for some showers as we get into Tuesday afternoon and evening. It isn't until Wednesday that the chance for thunderstorms returns to the fold, and those continue to stick around as we head into the second half of the work week. So the back end of the work week looks a whole lot different than the start of it, including today. Of course, Sunday really looks good. This is what your seven-day forecast looks like. Mostly sunny for the next few days. I mean, that's as good as it can get, really. Temperature-wise, we're looking at maybe the best temperatures today and tomorrow. Again, the mid to high 70s today, the lower 80s tomorrow. Dry conditions as well. As far as rain goes, we're not going to see any of that today and on Monday. And look at the overnight lows as well as we head into the upcoming work week. Temperatures slipping into the mid to low 50s. So overnight tonight, we certainly can't rule out the possibility of some spots falling into the upper 40s. Of course, Fall is right around the corner here as we head into that season, and it's going to feel a lot more like the season today and tomorrow. Of course, summer-like weather and summer-like conditions returns into the second half of the work week, but Sean and Michelle, I'm just over the moon excited for a day like today. My dogs love weather like oh, this. Oh, yeah, so. you got to take advantage. And I know the past couple of days I've walked out in the parking lot, and there, we got a couple of trees out back, and you're starting to see the, the green leaves change just a little bit. We're certainly not, you know, peak by no. any stretch, but <laughs> no. there's a couple of yellow, kind of brown leaves starting to pop I up I mean, out there. if you're a photographer, we're yeah. getting into maybe the oh, best time, time of year to get some mm -hmm. photos. But again, maybe you could do that outside today. There's yeah. so many things you can do outside. Today is just a day overall to. Get out there and enjoy the weather. You guys have any plans? I had a plan to just sit outside and yeah. have a picnic and hang out with my kids. Yeah. Fantastic. Can't beat that. I'll be working, but i got to find an outside story. Yes, and then i got some <laughs> yeah, football to watch later. So <laughs> excited. excited about so the football. excited. All kinds of things going on. Yeah. Well, the time right now is 846. We wanted to take note of that. 15 years ago, today at this exact minute, that first hijacked plane hit the North Tower of the World Trade Center there in New York City, and the entire attack claimed nearly 3,000 lives. There will be several services going on in Central Kentucky today to honor Honor and remember those lost lives and all of those who responded on that tragic day. Now we'll take a moment of silence to remember the lives lost. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT this morning. Good morning, I'm Bill Bryant. So nice to have you here on WKYT. A longtime Kentucky expert in human resources says a deadline is slipping up on many employers. The Labor Department's final ruling on overtime takes effect December 1st. Brian Simmons with CMI Consulting says some companies may think they can get around the new rules, but he says they really need a strategy for complying instead. Simmons is one of my guests on today's Kentucky Newsmakers. 
Uh, what will happen that we need to know about? Well, what's happening, Bill, is the Fair Labor Standards Act, which was enacted in 1938, uh, provided for uh, child labor provisions as well as setting a minimum wage. And one of the other things that it provided was for overtime exemptions. And with overtime exemptions, that's a major focus of what's changing within this final rule. Employees have to be classified as either being exempt from overtime provisions or non-exempt from overtime provisions. Now, when I say overtime provisions, what I'm meaning is for hours worked over 40 hours in an established work week, most people have the understanding that they receive overtime pay for those hours. Well, if you're exempt from overtime, then you receive a certain salary amount and you're not paid for overtime hours. You're paid the same salary regardless of the amount of hours that you work. That's considered to have been built in to your, your pay. Right? That yeah. is correct. Yeah. Now, uh, but now you say the change will mean that someone is not automatically uh, going to be uh, considered exempt if they're salaried. Right. Exactly, and that's one of the main misconceptions and one of the main reasons behind misclassification of whether an employee is exempt or non-exempt. A lot of organizations and businesses think that because they put someone on a salary basis, then they're automatically exempt, but that's not the case. There are certain criteria that have to be met in order for someone to be exempt. With each exemption, they do have to be on a salary basis, or for some it's a fee basis as well, but then there also has to be a salary level threshold, a minimum salary that that person has to make, and then there's also what's called the duties test. Certain criteria is part of the actual work duties that a person has to perform in order to be exempt, and they have to meet all three areas. So uh, some managers or people who work in positions, they get calls in the middle of the night or they do travel or this sort of thing. This will be uh, something that uh, employers are going to have to figure out. You're exactly right. This is huge. The Department of Labor uh, right now estimates that it will directly affect about 4.2 million people. Uh, it's going to indirectly affect a lot more than that. Uh, what companies have to do now is to first look and see if they have employees classified properly in the first place. That's the main thing because it's based on the actual job duties and the actual work that an employee does and it's done on a case-by-case -case basis. And you have indications that the government is going to uh, be aggressive in, uh, in investigating these matters. They're going to be very aggressive. I've had the opportunity to sit with the assistant district director of the Department of Labor's Wage and Hour Division. Uh, his direct quote was, they are a law enforcement agency and they will enforce the law. They're expecting 100% compliance on this. Now you can see my full interview with Simmons, also hear from Kentucky's drug control chief on Kentucky Newsmakers, which repeats this morning at 10 over on the CW Lexington. Set your DVR or catch it then. And we'll have the latest news, weather, and traffic for you bright and early this week on WKYT This Morning starting at 4.30. I'm Bill Bryant and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Coming up on 856 now on your Sunday morning. A little bit earlier in our newscast, we had a look at some dogs having fun, going surfing, that kind of thing. So it's only fair now that we give cats the same treat. Yes, and you know what that means? Some great puns, right? <laughs> yeah, you can, can't get around that. So these kitties hit the catwalk for a fashion show in New York. The chain boutique Lou and Gray hosted the show to celebrate their new store in New York City. All of the kittens performed perfectly, and now they're available for adoption. Yeah, there's no better way to, to advertise the cats than, you know, get them out there on the, on the catwalk, aptly named. Nicely done. Mike, I know you've got more puns to add to this one. I already made the whisker one already. I was trying, Come to, on, think, make it I was again. trying to think this whole time. I can't think of any of them. We'll put you on the spot. I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't think of that. Can't, <laughs> oh, I can't boo. Of I just want some stories. You like the that, pun king. I guess. I just want some stories not involving animals for a change. We're talking about, <laughs> we're talking about beer and ice cream. That's good stuff. Let's talk about that more, especially on a day like today where the weather is going to be so, so nice. So I guess walk your dogs in this kind of weather or your cats if, if you do that. Temperatures getting back into the mid to high 70s, mostly sunny. Just an overall awesome 
fall feeling day. Monday, more of the same as well with temperatures into the lower 80s, sunny skies. I mean, this is football weather, folks. And of course, the NFL is back on CBS today. I'm yeah. so, so happy. We're trying to figure out a fantasy football team for Sean. So post oh, one. Yeah. Please send those in. Post them in. Yes. Go outside. Walk your cat, like Mike yeah. said. Yeah, if you do walk your cat, let Sunday. us know. It'd be a good story. Have, have a good one. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>